Greetings, Eric Backer, naturopath from New Zealand. Thanks for checking out my video. I've been asked by numerous people in the past several months if I could do a video and talk about liver detoxification. How to do a proper liver detox. What are the steps you can do? What are the foods you need to avoid? What are the foods you need to include? Well, as usual, I spend a good hour on YouTube checking out videos by you know all kinds of people, ranging from armchair experts up to really smart people. And I've found some very good comments from lots of different people. I found some not so good comments. And I found some crazy comments from some weird people. Remember, YouTube's full of all kinds of different people with many different experiences. Some people actually recommend that you drink alcohol in small amounts with liver detoxification, would you believe it or not? Other people recommend you keep right away from it. Some people recommend not to do a liver detox and take supplements because they could make you sick. So, you know, there's all sorts of comments. So you need to be very careful with the kind of advice you're going to take on board. So this is going to be a pretty common sense kind of video with a bit of technical information thrown in. One video I, I've just viewed which talked about liver detoxication in five steps. It's had nearly 700,000 views. It failed to mention one major thing. One major thing which is really going to kill any kind of liver detox and that's drinking alcohol and it's amazing how many people I see who think they can drink even small amounts and still think they can do a liver detox so obviously we can't have any kind of alcohol if we're serious about liver cleansing because it's one of the number one toxins for the liver so we need to avoid that if we're really serious about it okay so first let's look at some signs and symptoms of what you know goes on if your liver is not very happy so i've made a few points here on paper i'm going to read a few out to you coated tongue bad breath red palms and soles flushing or sweating uh, flushed facial appearance some people can have the eyes can be a bit yellowy or the eyes can play up in general mild dull headaches waking up feeling you know this sort of dull sort of very low grade hungover kind of feeling so Remember the last time you were hungover? Maybe you don't drink alcohol, but if you ever have had alcohol and maybe a tiny little bit too much, you will know all about what a hangover is. You don't have to be vomiting to have a hangover. You could wake up with a very mild, dull, achy feeling in the head. And that's how some people feel all the time with the liver that's toxic. Itchy eyes. Itchy eyes can be a sign of problems with the liver. Swollen eyes or problems around the eyes. Dark circles under the eyes can be liver or kidney. Brownish spots or blemishes on the skin, we call them liver spots. Especially if a woman has a lot of spots on her hand, different parts of her body, it could also mean that she's not detoxifying estrogen or other hormones properly. What about digestive problems, gallstones, queasiness, nausea, burping, sour stuff coming up, you know, burping up bitter stuff from inside, intolerance to fatty foods, Drinking one glass of wine and feeling like you've been whacked over the head. Drinking one beer and thinking you've drunk a keg of beer. Okay, so an inappropriate reaction to alcohol can be a very clear sign of a liver problem. Same with fats. Smelling fats or eating fatty foods can make you sick. Reflux, indigestion, abdominal bloating, constipation, irritable bowel syndrome. Constipation is a very common sign of a liver that's in, in dire need. Now, a lot of these things I've mentioned may make you think you've got a parasite problem or a candida problem or irritable bowel syndrome, when in fact there could be a liver problem, okay? Very important point for you to, to know that. What about nervous system problems? Well, we know that people with um, what I call emotional constipation, people who get frustrated, who get very angry all the time, who get really peeved off, those people can have liver problems. So people with liver problems can get angry. Angry people, for example, can get liver problems. Look what alcohol does to people. It turns them into instant idiots. A lot of people who drink alcohol go out and do stupid things. The police spend every Friday and Saturday night cleaning up the streets, you know, because there are a lot of sick people out there who drink and start punching other people up. So poor concentration, foggy brain, overheating. Uh, we can get that uh, quite associated with mood swings as well. Uh, recurrent headaches, especially if the headaches are associated with uh, a nausea. Now, what about immune dysfunction? No, more, more signs and symptoms of a liver in need of attention because your liver is one of your big primary 
immune organs. It's got a lot of cells in it called Kupfer cells, and they're involved also in keeping the body very, uh, having the body very powerful immune response. So when the liver is sick or not well, it can also mean allergies, sinus, hay fever, dermatitis, hives. Many different skin problems can come as a result of a sick liver. Many different types of skin rashes and inflammations. Chemical and food sensitivities. MCS, multiple chemical sensitivity. Autoimmune diseases nearly always have some link with the liver problem. Chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia oftentimes is a liver dysfunction. Recurrent viral, bacterial and parasitic infections. Liver congestion, sick liver, poor detoxification pathways, all very common with liver problems. Blood sugar problems. What about hypoglycemia or low blood sugar? Liver problem. Craving for sugar, liver problem. And look at people who've got uh, type 2 diabetes or mature onset. They often have liver issues. They have high cholesterol. They can't metabolize fat properly. They have sugar cravings. They have a lot of signs and symptoms of liver dysfunction. And hormonal imbalances. I mean, we just spoke about that briefly, particularly with women with, with the brown spots, but menopausal symptoms like hot flushes can often involve the liver as well. So now you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff that can happen with liver dysfunction. So we're going to talk now about how to cleanse the liver. I'm not going to talk about these are the five steps because there are a lot more than that. But needless to say, it's very important for you to keep your liver in very good shape. It is one of your largest organs. It's the biggest organ in the body in terms of its ability to burn fat and clear toxins from the body. It is also a metabolic regulator. It warms the body up. It cools the body down. It has over 350 to 400 different uh, chemical actions in the body. There are two main pathways how the liver works. Phase 1 and Phase 2. In fact, I might just grab this chart here. I often show patients this chart. You can see my liver detoxification chart here. Let's see if I can stand here and just show you, walk you through a few things. So here you can clearly see, or other way around, phase one, toxins coming into the body. And this phase works by virtue of a bunch of things called P450 enzymes. And then we have phase two, the conjugation. And then we have this stuff here in the middle, right? So I can't hold that picture up for the screen, you know, and, and talk to you about it. So I'm going to talk you through this a little bit. So doctors know phase one quite well. How do they know phase one? Well, look at this drug guide here, okay? This is a New Zealand drug guide, but if you're in America or in any other country, I mean, your doctor will have this drug guide. So this drug guide's got over 1,600 drugs in it. Now, what do you see up the top there? You see drug interactions related to liver, ions, liver enzyme activity. So here we can clearly see there's pages and pages of drugs here, and up the top you see weird things like 2C9, you know, and 2A6 and stuff like that. So these are different P450 enzymes. There's a couple of hundred of them. So enzymes have a specific affinity for breaking certain toxins down. Drugs are hard on the liver, very hard on the liver. And in fact, when the liver enzymes break these drugs down, they become more toxic. And then they create what we call free radicals, or actually damage to the body. That's the intermediate pathway I showed you. Toxins come in, let's just say drugs, but it could be hormones, it could be pesticides, it could be all sorts of junk in your diet. It could be hydrogenated fats because you've just had some Kentucky Fried Chicken to eat. It could be aspartame because you just had a nice you know, gallon of Diet Coke to drink, or it could be anything. But some kind of toxin comes in, the P450 enzymes have to actually break, render those poisons down. They become more toxic through that breakdown. They go into the intermediate phase. And then this is why it's important to have antioxidants to stop oxidative stress. All right? Vitamins A, C, E, selenium, zinc, many other kinds of you know, elements there. So these things actually help to protect the liver. Glutathione, which we find in milk thistle, very important herb. L-glutathione is a very important, we call tripeptide. Three amino acids make up this compound that stops damage to the liver. The liver is full of glutathione. So then these toxins go from this middle pathway into the second phase, okay, called conjugation. And there are different types of conjugation pathways. 
Now the toxins get broken down further into either pee or poo, or comes out through your breath. You know, metabolically there are different ways you can eliminate toxins through your skin, for example. The stool and the urine are the two primary routes the liver has to dump garbage out of the body. So now that you know that, it's important that you pee properly and you poop properly. So constipated people should not do a liver detox. If you can't poop every day, if your bowel's blocked up, if you're sitting there on the toilet in the morning and you're trying to have a go and it's not happening or little bits are coming out and you've got to come back later on, what I call ineffectual urging, if you've got a particularly bad case of constipation or a history of it, you need to do a bowel cleanse or a purge before you even think about doing a liver detox. Now, this is what was missing on a lot of the videos I saw. They never talked about that, okay? If you've got a problem with your plumbing, let's just say you're trying to wash the dishes, but when you let the water down, the drain's blocked. Well, it's not a really good idea to fill up the sink, you know, right up to the top because the water's not going to be able to go out. If you've got toxic residues on your plates and cups you're trying to get rid of, and the drain's not working, well, you're pretty well stuffed. So what do you do? You've got to clear the drain pipe first. All right. Now your drain pipe is your bowel. The bowel has to be clean. If you look at my Candida Crusher book, also in some of the videos, I talk about a bowel purge. So it's very important to do a bowel purge before you even consider a liver detox. Unless you're a very healthy person, got a really good gut like I have, don't even think about doing a liver detoxification without having a clean bowel. It's a silly, silly idea. Because if you liberate a lot of toxins from the liver and they're not going to be excreted properly, you're going to take them up all over again. So rule number one, bowel purge first. All right, do a bowel purge. You can use magnesium for this. You can use you know different types of products like vitamin C powder. You can do a bowel purge. So that's important concept I want you to really remember. Bowel has to be clean before you even consider it. If you're going to consider the liver cleanse, I want you to really start changing the way you eat for several weeks leading into the liver detoxification. All right? There's no point like you know having uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken every day, McDonald's for breakfast three times a week, Diet Coke, pizzas every night, smoking 10 cigarettes a day and having three or four cans of beer and then oh, I'm going to go on a liver detox right now. I need to get that liver clean because I'm feeling like crap. So what's going to happen if you throw your body straight away into a detox when you've been living like crap. You're going to feel like crap. You're going to feel like total crap. You're going to be vomiting, diarrhea, headaches. You're going to be sick for days, even weeks. And I've seen this with many people. So a good point is to lead in. Okay. So this is what I call the warm turkey approach. You don't go cold turkey. You don't just stop all your, your beer and your pizzas overnight. All right. You do this way back. But what if you're already eating an amazing diet, your bowel's working beautifully, then it may be time for you to consider a liver detoxification. There are many different ways you can do a liver detox. I like herbal detoxifications. I like using specific formulas from different companies that include specific kinds of nutrients. So if we look at my chart again here, you can actually see the cofactors that help each phase. Okay. Let's have a look here. I'll show you this. So you can actually see, you can find these charts on the internet. Okay, You can see here, for example, uh, different things that expedite phase one. Now you'll see a lot of B vitamins here, for example. And phase two here, uh, we're looking with proteins, in particular methionine, cysteine, choline, and different kinds of elements. So how do you really clean the liver up? Well, one website I saw said you just need three herbs. Milk thistle turmeric, dandelion. Well, that's pretty simplistic. I think you need a little bit more than that. I like people to drink a liver tea. So go to your health food shop and buy a good quality liver tea. You can drink one or two cups a day. That's a smart move. Look at eating uh, a cleaner diet leading into the liver cleanse. And when you do the liver cleanse, we look at maybe at about one, two or three weeks of quite intensive dietary work. The best time to do the liver cleanse is spring spring going into summer so what is it now it is may so in the states now i think you guys are in spring or going into summer now is a perfect time to do a detoxification but first get that bowel working don't forget so consume foods that actually help to clean the liver we're talking sprouts 
we're talking things like apple cider vinegar, we're talking sour foods, bitter foods, beetroots, artichokes, capers, olives, rocket, endivy, uh, lettuce, chicory, you know, these things that are quite bitter in the mouth, lemon juice, lime juice, grapefruit juice. But be careful with grapefruit juice if you're taking pharmaceutical drugs. If you're taking different kinds of heart pills or brain pills or whatever kind of pills you're taking, because grapefruit contains a flavonoid called naringenin, and naringenin will really screw up one of your um, P450 enzymes. So it can actually upregulate that and make you detoxify much faster that drug. So be careful. Grapefruit juice is probably out if you're uh, taking a pharmaceutical drug, but there's no reason why you can't have lemon juice and lime juice. These are very good adjuncts as part of your liver cleanse. A good quality cider vinegar, nice and bitter, helps to secrete bile. Right. These are good things also if you've got a sluggish bowel to take. I like a formula called Swedish bitters. Go to Google, Swedish bitters. Try and get the original one. Uh, very, very good uh, liver detoxification will occur with Swedish bitters. You take one teaspoon, start with one teaspoon per day, and build up to one teaspoon three to four times per day before meals. Very good ability to work on phase one and phase two. Good ability to uh, help the body dump and release toxic bile. Wonderful product to use for probably about a month. So that's going to give you a little bit of an idea on liver cleansing. Other things I like, I did see one video that made a good recommendation, which I never saw other videos do, is to talk about actually eating liver. All right. So in the old days, doctors talked a lot about glandular therapy. Let me just show you something interesting. Practical endocrinology. Dr. Henry Harrower. Okay. Produced by the Royal Lee Foundation. Dr. Royal Lee, the guy who actually started Standard Process. So this book was written in 1932. So Henry Harrow was one of the, the founders, really, the founding people, or the, one of the originators of actually the Endocrine Association. He was right there at the beginning, way back. That book I just showed you, 700 pages, it's predominantly about glandular therapy, animal glands. So before the Endocrine Association got into drugs, they started to wreck it. Before that, doctors used glands to help people out. All right, heart, spleen, liver, lung, adrenal, kidney, all these body parts of animals are actually used for the patient to build their body part up and it was corresponding. So eating liver is very powerful for your liver. Uh, if you look at uh, Gerson therapy in Mexico now, uh, Dr. Gerson recommended raw calf's liver. Very powerful high glutathione content containing product for cancer therapy. So chicken liver. Very good, helps to build your liver up. And what Harrow were found uh, through research, through Swiss and German research, it didn't matter if a frog had, uh, or if a cow, for example, consumed a frog's liver, it still had an incredible affinity you know, on the other animal's liver. So you could even cross species, they found there was benefit. So glandular therapy now has been very maligned. Many people don't eat things like liver or lung or spleen anymore. But right up until recently, they did. And I believe that people had much more uh, powerful ability uh, to have strong organs than they do today because of this very reason. If you don't want to eat things like cow's liver, organic, you know, non-GMO or animals that are clean, pesticide-free, then you can, uh, you know, you can look at supplements, for example, you know, from certified clean animals. If you don't want to do that, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, that's fine. You don't have to eat these body parts at all. I'm just saying it is a powerful way for you to get your liver restored and in top shape by doing so. So other videos I've seen talk more about the emotional detox. Then it's important for you to understand that frustration and anger make your liver quite sick. So people that are very stressed and angry and very peeved off can have a very sick liver. The Chinese have attached emotion to each organ. Um, you know, with the kidneys, it's fear. Um, with the liver, it's anger. With the lungs, it's sorrow and grief. And with the heart, it's loss of love, or the shen, loss of the, the spirit. So being very angry and resentful and, and hateful of certain people in your life can give you a very sick liver. And probably another reason why you drink. 
or take drugs, which again toxify the liver. We mentioned the herbs. I like Swedish bitters. It's a formula that's been tried and tested for over 100 years. So instead of just going off and buying milk thistle, dandelion, turmeric, bipleurum, uh, you know, uh, many different schizandra and lots of different kind of herbs and playing around, unless you're a herbalist like me, I wouldn't recommend you go there. Uh, milk thistle is a tea, but Swedish bitters, good product. Should you eat meat? Well, that's up to you. I don't think people have a problem with meat with detoxification at all. In fact, phase two needs proteins and amino acids to detoxify properly. So you can follow a system, which you may see on YouTube, a particular system to do things, but you don't need to do any of this with liver detox. Remember, spring and summer, fresh foods, salads, sprouts, the foods we spoke about, fresh produce, fresh herbs, uh, not a problem. Eggs are fine as part of a detox as far as I'm concerned. So you don't need to starve your body to do that, but it does pay for you to cut out all the crap out of the diet processed foods, hydrogenated fats, which you'll find in cookies and cakes and biscuits and things like that. And another thing we didn't talk about was chocolate. You cannot detoxify the liver, in my opinion, with cacao or chocolate. It's not going to happen. So some of the core things to keep away from for a few weeks is alcohol, caffeine and chocolate, pharmaceutical medications. All non-essential drugs must be stopped. They're very, very toxic to the liver. Pesticides, sprays in the garden, glyphosate in the garden, those sorts of things. Personal care products, go more for the organic natural ones. If you can, take a couple of weeks out from work and do the detoxification properly. Do the bowel purge, take the herbs, eat the food, maybe have some saunas or some sweating, uh, which is an extremely powerful adjunct, drinking lots of fresh water, lemon juice, cider vinegar, cultured and fermented foods, Again, remember they're bitter and they create um, a good lactic environment for beneficial bacteria to grow. And also don't forget um, to do a bit of a cleansing approach. Maybe look at my Canzita Remove product um, to clean up any you know bugs you might have there, parasites, bacteria, fungi, get rid of them. Look at the Canzita Restore, enzymes and probiotics. Get that gut working better, the pancreas activated. Put the good bacteria where you want them to go and crowd out the bad guys all perfect part of liver detoxification. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight into you know, how to cleanse the liver uh, and some good um, ideas there. If you've got any questions, please uh, don't forget to post a question you know, with regard to this video. Don't forget to click on the link below for my free report. And please do check out my Candida survey uh, to see uh, what kind, if you have got a yeast infection and how severe it is, you'll find it at candidacrusher.com. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for tuning in.